بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والأخيار من صحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين My dear brothers and sisters May the peace and the blessing and the grace of Allah be upon you and with you all السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته One of the most controversial issues among the schools of thought in Islam is the issue of shafa'ah or intercession. Intercession is not new in the Islamic tradition. Other religions, previous religions such as Christianity, Judaism, they do also believe in the concept of intercession. Within the Islamic tradition, the school of Ahl al-Bayt, the Shia Islam school, and some other Sunni traditions do believe in the validity of intercession. While other traditions, which are at a fewer number, believe otherwise. They do not believe in intercession. They reject it. And actually, they consider the one who believes and subscribes to this concept as being heretic or non-Muslim. What does Quran say about this? Shafa'ah has been mentioned in the Quran in three different ways. The Quranic approach to the Shafa'ah has three different ways. Number one, some of the verses in the Qur'an completely negate the concept of shafa'ah. Number two, there are another group of verses in the Qur'an that mentions the shafa'ah, but they say it is the exclusive right of God. It's only God who has the right to practice and implement intercession and shafa'ah. A third group of the verses in the Quran, and these are many verses, that stresses, this group stress, that Allah has the right of shafa'ah, it belongs to him, but he can bestow this right on others. He can give this right that he has exclusively, he can delegate this right, He can delegate this right to other people. And we will say, who are those, the others? Where are these verses? Look at, let's say, Surah Yunus. Surah Yunus, chapter 7 in the Quran. And this is verse number 3. ما من شفيع إلا من بعد إذنه There is no intercessor. No intercessor can plead with him except by his permission, by God's permission. So when God gives permission, then an intercessor, a shafi' can plead on behalf of others to save them. The second verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Who is he that can intercede with him, with God, Except with his permission. If God gives permission, then that person, be it a prophet, be it an imam, be it a teacher sometimes, be it a wali, one of the true servants of God, he can intercede. Another verse in the Quran, the third one, this is in Surah Taha. Yawma'idhin, on such a day, meaning the day of judgment. لَا تَنْفَعُ الشَّفَاعَةُ إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانُ وَرَضِيَ لَهُ قَوْلَهُ On such a day, on that day, no intercession shall avail except the one from whom God, the most gracious, has given permission and whose word is acceptable to him. وَرَضِيَ لَهُ قَوْلَهُ If God accept his word and If God likes this person, endorses this person, then that person can intercede. It states very clearly 
that shafa'ah is practiced only with the permission of God, not without his permission. There is another verse in Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam is chapter 19, verse 87. لا يملكون الشفاعة إلا من اتخذ عند الرحمن أحدا None shall have the power of intercession except one who has received permission or a promise from Allah the Most Gracious إلا من اتخذ عند الرحمن أحدا God promised him that I will give you this authority I will authorize you to conduct the shafa to embrace the people with your shafa'ah. As he promised Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Asa an yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda. O min al layli, in Surah Al Asra. O min al layli fatahajjad bihi nafilatan lak. Asa an yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda. Maqam al mahmud wa maqam al shafa'ah. Commentators they say, this is the praiseworthy stand that you're going to receive. This glory that you're going to receive on the day of judgment is the stand, is the stand of intercession. God is going to enable you to intercede on behalf of people. So when we come to conclusion here, vis-a-vis -vis the verses that discusses shafa'ah in the Qur'an. The first group negates the shafa'ah. The second group states that the shafa'ah is the exclusive right of God. The third group which take precedence over the previous two groups. This third group says, yes, shafa'ah does exist. Yes, it is the exclusive right of God. But yes, God can give this right to whomever he is pleased with. إِلَّا مَنِ اتَّخَذَ عِنْدَ الرَّحْمَانِ عَهْدَ The Holy Quran tells us that the prophets and the messengers, they have permission from their Lord to intercede on behalf of certain people. The prophets have this power, the imams could have this power, even the awliyaullah, and we have in some of the narrations by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, even your teacher can intercede on your behalf. The Holy Quran that you read, which is a book, this is a book, it's a material, but comes on the Day of Judgment to intercede on your behalf, to witness for you, to testify for you that this such man, such and such, took care of me, nurtured me, practiced me, protected me. So the Quran, the Holy Quran can intercede. Your teacher can intercede. And definitely Prophet Muhammad, who is the teacher of all teachers, who is the best of all messengers of God. In Surah An-Nisa, verse 64, Allah says to the Prophet, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا We sent no messenger, but to be obeyed by the leave of God. If they who have been unjust to themselves, wrongdoers, they committed sins against themselves and others, they were unjust to themselves, had come to you, O Prophet Muhammad, and begged Allah's forgiveness, begged Allah's forgiveness through you, and the Messenger had begged forgiveness for them, indeed, they would have found Allah all forgiving, most merciful. Although God is available, but they come to the Prophet, they need your intercession here. 
They need you to stand with them and to plea for them on behalf of them to God. Definitely God is going to grant forgiveness, no doubt about it. He is the one, none else other than him who accept the repentance. But God also would listen to the intercession, would consider the intercession of his beloved prophet. So they came during the lifetime of the prophet, the sinners, group of the sinners, some of them were even hypocrites. جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ So the Prophet sought forgiveness on their behalf. This is the meaning of intercession. Interceded on their behalf. لَوَجَدُ اللَّهِ Definitely God is not going to reject the plea of his Prophet, the intercession of his Prophet. This is during the time of Prophet Muhammad. Even before him, we read in the history of Islam, and the history of other religions that even before him intercession did exist and the story of Joseph in Surah Yusuf alayhi salam قالوا يا أبانا استغفر لنا ذنوبنا إنا كنا خاطئين O Father ask forgiveness from Allah for our sins indeed we have been sinners قالوا يا أبانا استغفر لنا ذنوبنا they could have asked God directly. They came to the Father. They asked the Father to intercede on their behalf, asking forgiveness for them from God. So this is another proof that not only in the history of Islam, but also in the previous histories and eras and times and scriptures and books and prophets and messengers, this concept of intercession did exist. So the father did not say to them, oh, this is heresy. This is polytheism. This is shirk. This is disbelief. Don't say this. You go to God. You just go and ask him. He can understand you. You can reach out to him. You can knock at his door and he would open it for you. He didn't say that. What did he say? قَالَ سَوْفَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ رَبِّي he promised them that I will. I will ask my Lord for forgiveness for you. Verily, he and only he is oft forgiving, most merciful. He gave them a promise and he made them hopeful that God would listen to you. If you are sincere, I will intercede on your behalf and God is going to accept my intercession and ultimately he's going to forgive you. Who's entitled to receive the intercession of a prophet or an imam? Any sinner? Any person who defied God? Any arrogant person who did not accept the message of Islam? No, it's not like that. Although the Prophet says, جُعِلَتْ شَفَاعَتِي لِأَهْلِ الْكَبَائِرِ مِنْ أُمَّتِي My intercession has been reserved for those with cardinal sins. But he also gave two exceptions. He said, accept الشِّرْكُ والظلم, Polytheism and injustice. Someone who did injustice in his life. Polyth polytheism, someone who is not even a Muslim, does not believe in the monotheism of God, in the Tawheed. Injustice, maybe he, he's a Muslim, but he did a lot of crimes in his life. Murder, you know, human rights violations, a dictator who killed and suppressed thousands and thousands and thousands of his people. Such person will be deprived from the intercession. Other than those, People with good intention. People with belief, they have belief. But they fell behind in certain areas of their obligations, religious obligations, moral or social 
spiritual obligations. They did not do very good. They did not do excellent. They need a push. They need some help. But their intention was good. Their love to God was good. But however, they were a human being. They committed many sins here and there. For those, the shafa'a is reserved. For those who had good belief in God, good belief in the Holy Quran, very good belief in the Prophet and the Imams, who did practice Islam, not someone who never practiced. Imagine someone who never prayed, not even a single prayers. That person would not be able to receive the shafa'a because he did not show goodwill. His intention was not good. But someone who worked, but still could not achieve the highest points, could not accumulate enough points to make it to paradise. That person is going to receive the shafa'a of the Prophet. And therefore, the Prophet himself states, each Prophet before me asked Allah for something which he was granted by the Lord. And I saved my request until the day of judgment for intercession on behalf of my ummah, my nation. This hadith is mentioned in one of the important books of hadith in the Sunni tradition called Kenzul Ummal. The other hadith is also from Kenzul Ummal, the same book. The Prophet ﷺ states, My intercession will be for the people who committed the cardinal sins. The other hadith by the Prophet himself in the same book, Kanzul Ummal, he states, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the intercessors are five. He gives an example of those who are qualified to intercede. Number one, the Holy Quran. It would intercede on your behalf. Two, one's near relatives. If you do good to your relatives, to your extended family members. And they are virtuous. They come on the day of judgment. They intercede on your behalf. Three, the trust, the amana. If you keep the amana, if you fulfill this trust, if you don't betray it, the same amana is going to come on the day of judgment, stand before God and intercede on your behalf. It will testify, God, this man was an honest man. He never betrayed me. He delivered me to my rightful owners and people. Number four, the Prophet says, your Prophet also is going to intercede on your behalf. And number five, and the family of your Prophet, Ahlul Bayt, also are going to be your intercessors on that day, the day of judgment. We ask Allah, He would grant us this opportunity to be able to receive the intercession of Prophet Muhammad and his noble family.